Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. During a previous video I explained how wheel alignment has a direct effect on tire wear, whether it's normal tire wear or uneven tire wear. I will include the link on the video description in case you haven't seen it, that way you know what I'm talking about. And this video is about wheel alignment, of course. And what I'm going to do, no different than before, I'm going to bring the camera up close so you can see this better as I explain it to you. So let's get started. The first area we're going to look into is caster. This is the front of the vehicle and this is the strut. So when the top of the strut is leaning back and the bottom obviously forward, this is what is called positive caster. And when the top of the strut is leaning forward and the lower is leaning backwards, then obviously is the opposite, which is negative caster. As I wrote it here, most vehicles are going to have a very slight positive caster to provide better stability and help the wheels to track straight. One disadvantage when this caster is excessive is that the vehicle is going to shimmy, especially at high speeds, and the steering wheel is going to snap back more. So we're going to move on to the next item now. Our next area of study is what is called toe adjustment. This would be the front bumper, and toe out would be when the front side of the tires, which is closer to the front bumper, would be facing out, because this is your center line right here, and the inner part would be closer to each other. Now you have to realize that it's not going to be that extreme. I drew these tires facing out in a very drastic way, so you can understand it, but this difference is in degrees and is very minor. A lot of times you can find out yourself if you have a toe adjustment issue by using a tape measure. If you place the tape measure like in the center along the thread and then you extend it, you would do something like this and you would measure it so you, you would find an area like I said close to the center of the tire and then you would measure how much it is like here for example let's say five and a half and then you would measure again and here we're looking at four and a half so in this exaggerated picture that I drew it's an inch difference so that's how you could know if you have a toe adjustment issue by using a tape measure on toe in obviously it's going to be the opposite the front side of the tires which is closer to the bumper they're going to be closer to each other and of course there's going to be a greater distance on the back of the tires you know which is going to the back of the vehicle and as I wrote it here, most rear wheel drive vehicles are aligned with a slight toe in. And remember, this is in degrees and is very minor. And this is done so the vehicle can have a very straight line drivability. Front wheel drive vehicles will tend to have a slight toe out. And the reason why the front wheel drive is going to be facing out instead of in is to compensate for the force that the drive axles are creating as they're trying to spin the tires. And on the rear wheel drive vehicles, the power is being applied to the rear tires, of course. So this is just fighting the vehicle itself as far as its movement. And as far as how much adjustment each vehicle is going to have, whether it's going to be a toe out or toe in, that will vary depending on each manufacturer. When you have excessive toe adjustment, which tends to be toe in for the most part, the tires are going to wear unevenly, of course, and they're going to have like a feather wear. You can actually feel it if you place your hand around it. And the reason why is just like I wrote it here, they are actually fighting each other. If, if the adjustment is too extreme, you know, here's a tire that wants to go this direction, this tire wants to go in this direction, and the car is trying to go straight. So, if this toe adjustment is so severe, your car would shake would vibrate really really bad and the reason for that is because you have three items going in different directions as I already mentioned this car is going forward this car is going this way this car is going that way and the opposite happens here right your car is going this way that car wants to go that way this one wants to go that way so it would be a lot of shaking you know in either case when this is severe you would know real quick if you have a severe toe adjustment when you're trying to drive your car down the road and it's just shaking madly and back to what I said earlier just use your tape measure and measure the distance in between the tires and it should be more than let's say a quarter of an inch difference if you see more than a quarter of an inch then you already know you have an issue and remember the adjustment is done on degrees using a tape measure just gives you an idea of 
how bad it could be. Next area we're going to move into is what is called the thrust angle. And this is when the rear tires are facing in a certain direction and the front tires are facing in obviously a different direction than they are. This tends to be mostly on vehicles that have rear independent suspension that is adjustable and to correct this the rear tires need to be adjusted to where they're tracking in the same way the vehicle wants to go. In our last section I'll study what is called camber and this is the perpendicular relationship between the tire and the road or the tire and the struts per se. On a positive camber the top side of the tire is going to be facing out and the lower side of the tire obviously is going to be facing in. On a negative camber is obviously the other way around. You have the top of the tire facing in towards the car and then you have the lower side facing out. Most vehicles are going to have slight negative camber and as I wrote it here is going to enable better handling around the turns, especially at high speed. In the other hand, positive camber, which would be this, this is sometimes desired in off-road vehicles with very very large wheels and this is going to enable better steering. An example of something very large off-road would be like a farm equipment like a tractor and some of those can be severe enough that you can actually see it visually how it would be leaning like that. On the other hand the negative camber could be very severe like on race cars if they go around a lot of turns you will actually visually see the angle. Race teams normally play with this, you know, during practice to get it just right depending on each road course. For your vehicle it would be a lot of work to be adjusting it all the time. So normally it's just going to be preset depending on what the manufacturer recommends. And remember this is very slight and it's on degrees. And also you need to remember alignment issues is something that you shouldn't have they tend to occur when parts wear out. For example, if your ball joint and your bushings start wearing, then that's going to affect it. It's going to affect the camber and you're going to see uneven tire wear. If you have negative camber, your wear is going to be right here in the inner part. Sometimes if you let it go too far, it would go all the way down to the cords of the tire and this would still have thread, the outer part. On positive camber, obviously it would be the other way around. This part would be worn out and this would have thread. Because same thing of the angle. And back to what I said, normally worn out parts is what's going to cause camber adjustments that are not normal. So a DIY tool that you can use to find out if your camber is very severe is a level. You just put it against the tire because the tires need to be making contact with the ground obviously because otherwise it's going to affect it. If you race it then it's not going to be accurate. So it needs to be sitting on the ground and you would place your level against the tire and that's how simple it is to measure the camber. On the toe it's different because you can do it with a tape measure. One of the best ways to know whether you have an alignment problem is just look at your tires. If your tires are wearing unevenly like I said, if you have wear here or wear over here, you have an alignment problem. Or, as I mentioned on the toe, which I'll bring the camera back up, this would be slightly similar as the camber. If you have toe out, it's very likely that it might have more wear here. And on the toe in, you may have more wear here. But this is different than the camber because it would be more like a feather. You know, here it would be this kind of wear and over here it would be the opposite. Toe adjustments are the easiest to do for a DIY because all you have to do is your tie rods, you just adjust them. If you have too much toe out, then you adjust your tie rods to bring them closer and if you have too much toe in, then you adjust them out and so forth. So this is one of the easiest adjustments for a DIY person to do. Everything else is going to be slightly more complicated and most DIYs are not going to attempt to mess with it per se. But just remember, anything that is severe is most likely being caused by a worn out part. And doing an adjustment will take care of that problem for a little while, but it's just going to place a band-aid per se, because the worn out part is still there and is bound to get worse. 
so an adjustment would buy you a little bit of time but at the end of the day you need to have it aligned professionally so everything is back to normal and find out what parts are causing the issue and replace them and there you go now you understand well I'm in better and how it affects tire wear plus you should understand better the different driving characteristics of your vehicle when it's not properly aligned some minor adjustments like toe in and toe out you can do yourself and you can also identify what's causing the improper alignment due to worn out parts like ball joints and bushings and those items and it all comes down to visual inspection if you notice that your tires are not wearing correctly it's going to be an alignment problem because when the vehicle was new everything was set up correctly so always look at the tire wear and if you notice uneven tire wear then start pinpointing you know what's causing it based on the information I just gave you thanks for watching see you next time